Welcome to Statistics for Survey Session 2 Descriptive Statistics Tables, Segment 4, Two Variables in One Table, where we'll discuss cross or contingency tables. The objective of this segment is to understand and apply the concepts of a contingency table. It's useful if you're already familiar with the terms absolute frequency and relative frequency. In this segment, we'll discuss the terms contingency table, independent and dependent variable, and row, column, and grand percentages. A cross table or contingency table is a table that shows two variables at the same time. For example, here's a cross table showing the results of the age classification of young, middle, and old versus the results of the favorite color. So for example, this four means that there were four middle-aged people who have as a favorite color blue. These are the columns and these are the rows. When constructing a cross table like this, it's important to think about which variable will go into the columns and which one will go into the rows. One way on deciding on this could be that you have an independent and dependent variable. A dependent variable is a variable that depends on another. So could it be that age depends on your favorite color? Well, that's very unlikely. The other way around, your favorite color might depend on your age. Therefore, in this case, favorite color is the dependent variable and age is then actually the independent variable. Some textbooks will say that the independent variable should go into the columns and the dependent variable should go into the rows, like I did in this example. There are a few other textbooks that say that this should be the other way around. Most textbooks I encounter do it like this though, that they put the independent variable in the columns and the depending one in the rows. One deviation from this is if you have a lot of different values in the independent variable. It might then be that it doesn't fit anymore on your page. You could then perhaps better swap the two around and then hopefully it will still fit on the page. Besides the absolute frequencies, sometimes also the relative frequencies or the percentages are added in a cross table. Now, since we have three types of totals, the row totals, the column totals, and the grand total, there are also three different ways of actually calculating the percentages. One method is to use the row total. So for example, the row total of red is 15. And if we want to then know the percentage of young people who have favorite color of red, we can simply say 5 over 15 times 100 is 33%. So 33% of those who have red as their favorite color in the survey are young people. We could, of course, also use the column total in our calculation. So now we use the 23, and again, as an example, the 5 people at young red. And this gives us 5 over 23 times 100 is 22% which means that 22% of the young people in the survey indicated to have red as their favorite color. The last option we have is to use the grand total or table total, 55. Again, using the young red as our example, we then get 5 over 55 times 100 equals 9%. And this means that 9% of all the respondents indicated to be young and have red as their favorite color. Most textbooks will suggest to use the total of the independent variable. In this case, the independent variable was the age classification. So we would use each time indeed the 23 for the young people. And if we wanted to calculate the percentages of the middle age, we use 20. And for the old, we use 12. This way, it becomes easier to compare the different age classifications with each other. If you have another table exactly like this one from a different data set, you might want to use the grand total so you can compare the percentages of this table with the other one.